Good morning, everyone, uh, respected chair, sir, and distinguished speakers and uh, delegates uh, over here. Greetings from ICAR National Institute of Abiotic Stress Management, Baramati, Pune. Actually, uh, I thank the VSI for giving an opportunity to Niazam and especially to my director, K. Sammi Reddy, who was supposed to be the lead speaker for this uh, session, but uh, due to some emergency, he is not able to come today. So I'm, I'll try to give whatever understanding what I have, uh, because this is my, I'm just beginning. This is the fifth year of my joining at the Institute. And whatever work I have done towards soil health in sugarcane cropping system, I'll just be presenting here. But I'm very happy to mention that uh, I'll, I'm sharing the stage and the session with this stalwart, so thank you, sir. Um, welcome to my presentation on effect of tillage, residue, and nutrient management on soil organic carbon, biology, and yield under multi retaining sugarcane system in semi-arid tropics of India. So since the uh, last day, we are all discussing about the importance of sugarcane, especially for this area and India, so I'll not be discussing much about it. But just two points. First one is it's not just the production and uh, the national GDP. The crop is also supporting 6 million farm families and the workforces of 550 sugar mills of India. And the second point I want to highlight here is it is also one of the high biomass producing crop uh, among the major cropping systems of India after rice and maize. It is also one of the huge biomass producing crop, having 108 million tons of residue annually with a trash load of 8 to 10 tons per hectare. And the usual practice in the area is like trash burning, and especially in Maharashtra, if we could show the uh, graph, there is around 57,000 fire events in the last year. So if we see the different research conservation technologies in terms of enhancing the soil organic carbon or residue management, most of the research so far in India has been focused on rice wheat cropping system. There is not much on the sugarcane cropping system, which is also having a huge biomass production annually. So with this background, our research at the ICR National Institute of Abiotic Stress Management under the CRPCA, Conservation Research Platform for Conservation Agriculture, this study was uptaken to appraise the impacts of different resource conservation technology on soil biology and soil carbon retention and their interrelationship with the yield in the sugarcane cropping system. So this is the study site having vertical of sandy clay texture in a hot, semi-arid, and scarcity zone it's uh, categorized as. And the study started in July 2016. It was an absolute crop of uh, MS uh, 10,001. And the uh, first one is the Adsali, so harvested in 2018, followed by four Atun crops. So whatever result I'll be discussing here is uh, after the harvest of the fr one fresh crop and after four Atuns in 2022. So what was the change uh, in terms of soil biology and soil organic carbon and uh, its fractions after, before and after the four Atuns under different uh, treatments? So the experimental design was split-split. The first main plot was in terms of tillage, which was conventional tillage versus redu reduced tillage. In the conventional tillage, it was two deep plowings followed by two harrowings and one reaser and four operation, whereas in reduced tillage, it was one plowing followed by one reaser and four operation. In the subplot, it was residue burning, which is the traditional practice of the area, followed by the residue retention, whatever was produced in that treatment. And the nutrient management practice was in the sub-subplot, which we applied in the retune crops. So 25% of whatever nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium was advised, 25% was applied as a band placement in basal treatment, and 75% uh, in fertigation in further frequent applications followed by N2 nutrient management practice 2, which was 50% as basal and 50% as fertigation. And N3 was 75% as basal and 25% fertigation. So we took the soil samples after the uh, fourth return uh, from 0 to 15 and 15 to 30 centimeter and analyzed for several parameters, which I'll be discussing in the uh, further slides. 
So the first one to see in terms of the yield, uh, we can, this is a long table just to make it like a, to the point, the reduced tillage with the 50% application of uh, nutrient in uh, basal as basal and raised 50% through uh, frequent fertigations uh, in the standing crumb has the overall, like this is a pooled analysis. So had uh, the highest return kill yield of uh, 85 tons per hectare and the bees to benefit is to cost ratio was also higher in this treatment as compared to the conventional agriculture. But if we see, I'll go one by one about the soil parameters what we took. The, so we took the analysis of soil enzymes, the dehydrogenase activity, alkaline phosphatase activity, and the beta glucosinase activity. So we could see in terms of reduced tillage, in terms of residue retention, and in terms of the nitrogen management also, the reduced tillage residue and the 50% as basal and raised 50% at fertigation had higher enzymatic activity in uh, respective of the type of enzyme. It has the higher uh, activity found in those treatments. And in 15 to 30 centimeter also the trend was similar, but the value was a little bit lower. Uh, also, we took the different soil microbial counts. So we uh, discussed bacteria, fungi, and actinomycetes. And uh, similarly, uh, reduced tillage and residue retention had 50% uh, of higher bacteria. The bacterial colonies were higher as compared to fungi and actinomycetes, irrespective of the treatments. So bacteria was comparatively high of 50%, uh, whereas 40% fungi and 70% actinomycetes were found in reduced tillage and residue retention plots. And this might be due to the positive impact of residue retention uh, to give the feed for the microbial population. And because uh, versus the residue burning were leading to a loss of microbial population. This is the important one, which we took the total soil organic carbon and its fractions. So generally, you know, we all know there are four fractions, very labile, labile, less labile, and non-labile fractions. So higher soil, or in terms of the total soil organic carbon, uh, reduced tillage had 12% higher SOC over the six period of uh, six years of cropping season uh, versus the conventional tillage. And the residue retention had 17 to 63% of higher carbon pools because uh, if we see the very labile, it was around four to five megagram of carbon per hectare. And uh, labile and less labile are more or less two to three um, megagram carbon per hectare increase, whereas non-labile was in the range of around 14 to 16. Uh, if we consider the residue retention part, residue retention had the higher uh, increase, which was 63%, uh, uh, 34 and 15% higher in terms of labile, less labile, and non-labile respectively. But uh, overally, the passive pool, uh, which is which composed of the less labile and non-labile carbon pool, it was higher, around 77%, as compared to the active pool, which is very labile and la uh, labile only which indicates that there is a, uh, this increase in carbon in the passive pool leads to the carbon sequestration uh, in this uh, sugarcane cropping system because right now all the, uh, like a majority of climate mitigation uh, focus is on how to sequester the carbon in arable cropping system. So this indicates like over the six years there is uh, also a chance of uh, increasing the carbon in the passive pool in terms of carbon sequestration. We also did a study uh, of carbon retention efficiency, like how much cumulative carbon we are putting into the soil and how much the uh, soil under different treatments are able to retain it. It was, uh, if, the, if you see the graph, the highest CRE was in the uh, residue retention and the residue uh, reduced tillage plot. Whereas in the conventional practice, which is the extreme left one, the conventional tillage under the residue burning, obviously there is a loss of around 50%. Uh, we also did a mineralizable carbon study which fitted a first order uh, exponential model, model and we also only did it for uh, residue retention because it was having a significant impact and a higher proportion of carbon we could see in that one. So for uh, 0 to 30 centimeter depth, the residue retention plots had a mineralizable carbon of amount 619 uh, uh, microgram of carbon dioxide carbon per gram of the soil and the mineralization was highest for the initial three days of incubation as usual. 
Uh, for carbon sequestration study also we did. We could just see the reduced stillage and the residue retention had a, uh, an amount of 5.23 megagram carbon per hectare as compared to the uh, conventional tillage and the residue burning which was 1.73 megagram carbon hectare and that was in the loss. So residue retention plots under a reduced tillage exhibited a higher rate of carbon sequestration up to 0.87 megagram carbon per hectare per year over the other treatments. So to conclude this one, the enzymatic and microbial activities were strongly influenced by the tillage, residue retention, and nutrient management practices. And of several pools of SOC, whatever we analyzed of the four pools, the higher proportion was found in the non-labile carbon, uh, indicating a higher soil carbon sequestration potential in that soil. 50% uh, of the re recommended uh, dose of fertilizer what we applied as the basal. Uh, maybe provided the initial boost to the crop growth and the microbial activities, whereas raised 50% applied through fertigation and subsequent uh, practices help in sustaining the crop growth through synchronized supply of plant and uh, nutrient demand. Intensive cropping systems such as sugarcane, even for a longer period with reduced tillage and residue retention practices, will result in it. Uh, increase of 5.23 megagram carbon per hectare, thereby a process of carbon dioxide emission reduction of 4.23 megagram carbon per hectare than conventional practice, which is uh, conventional tillage and the residue burning. So even under a hot semi-arid uh, region of the vertices, growing sugarcane cropping system with these practices will be sustainable in a long-term practice. We also demonstrating these plots to various uh, visitors, distinguished visitors and uh, farmers and students. We have also taken uh, many course, short term courses and the training programs and these are already published in like uh, popular article kind of thing for Maharashtra to get the farmers know about it. So thank you so much.